on the bays tonight here at the PartyPoker.net European Open 5. Last time, Bombizantis struck gold for the old guard by making it through. And tonight, the young internet guns come to the fore in the forms of Andy Ward and Andrew Feldman as they take on that six-barrel beach bluffer, the Marbella Kid. Poker players, guard your guild. Zimbler is known far and wide as the Marbella Kid. He's been playing poker for 13 years and has plenty of caches to show for it. How do you know he's bluffing? Because he's bet. My five competitors each know that I'm going to win. They know it deep down. I've told them that. I can see in their eyes they're not hungry for it. I'm hungry for it. I know it's going to happen and the universe is going to make it happen. Andrew Feldman has just turned 21, but he'll carry the mantle as favorite here tonight. He's a former UK Open champion and has made several final tables in this format. Plus, he's won seven figures online. I think other players perceive me as an aggressive young internet player and would see me as quite a fast player that likes to play a lot of hands uh, due to the my internet style and I would imagine wouldn't give me too much respect when I race. From the poker capital of Bridge North, this is Marcus Bip Jones, who qualified to this event through a live satellite down the Black Horse Pub. Peter Smythe hails from Liverpool. He's played around the world and has won $116,000 online, but this is his first time at a TV table. Nick Farrow is a poker journalist who won 10,000 pounds in Manila and has now flown west to parlay his dosh. Online tournament specialist Andy Ward is making a rare forge out of his house. He's played in this format several times, has made two final tables, plus was a runner-up in a World Series of Poker bracelet event only last year. How do I think other players perceive me? That's an interesting one. I really don't know. Probably as quite robotic and straightforward. And if that's what they think, you know, that's fine. And it's not all that far from the truth, so who am I to say? This heat bright with promise. I'm joined by Nick Perso and Nick, two guys at this table who are very proficient on the internet, Andy Ward and Andrew Feldman, but they also have done well live. Yeah, Andy won a big uh, tournament in this format and uh, Andy Ward a very good World Series uh, last year. So these guys can take their internet skills to the live game for sure. Then you've got uh, Paul Zimbler, of course, the Marbella kid in the one seat, who pretty much only plays live, and he is fast and loose. I'm looking to see some great three-barrel bluffing from this guy. I've heard he's got a bit of a reputation, and he should make it a really lively game. Chips on the table. The yellow chip's worth 1,000, the blue chip's worth two, and the red's 5K a piece. Of course, 100,000 in front of every player, and 600K in play. Unknown quantities in uh, Bev Jones, Smythe, and uh, Nick Farrow. Do you, do you know anything about those two? <coughs> I played a uh, GUKPT event oh. in uh, Brighton on the final with uh, Marcus. Uh, he went out seventh, I went out six. It's pretty solid, but uh, I don't know about the other two guys. But they're here, and I'm I'm sure they're really up for the win. Yeah, Bev Jones, of course, uh, limping in here. King Jack suited under the gun. He won a Grand Prix for ninety thousand pounds. So those are not easy fields. For sure. Eight thousand. And this is this is something that uh, we saw, you know, Thomas Beale do earlier, and I think Andy Ward is of the same school. If a guy limps. He raises with almost anything. Now, Andrew said to me in the green room before this heat started that on the very first hand he felt he was going to go out. And I said, well, it's quite easy. Just look down at a hand and fold it. He goes, what if I've got aces? And I said, well, you've got to play those. But he's now got two sevens, and he's very accustomed, given that Andy's an internet player, for the isolation raise. So with three way to the fluff, and I'm sure that's not a great result for Andy. Now, what do you think about Feldman's call with the sevens? Is, is it too expensive, or is it all right to peel off the flop this early? Well, at this stage, with the blinds being what they are, he can and, uh, you know, call for set value, okay. but they okay. he does he's committed 8% of his stack already, so it's pretty close. This is the power of being the razor, isn't it? Absolutely, Jesse. Okay, this is exactly why 
you know, Andy Ward's made this play pre-flop. He's got the initiative. He's isolated the limper in Marcus Bebb Jones. And now Andrew has to fold two sevens. It's, it's kind of what I love about Andy Ward. I mean, you look at that flop. You say, I've got two callers. Someone has to have an ace. But you know what? Bet it anyway, right? See what happens. In the long run, it's a percentage play he's making. There. He's a very, very smart guy. He just figures that, you know, yes, sometimes it's going to be an ace. And he's going to know because they're going to either call or check raise him. So, you know, he's happy to take a cheap stab on the pop around the half the pot. And... Uh, it got through That's this time. But the worst hand won, Jesse. <laughs> it certainly did. Farrell and Ward on top. And the only guy lagging is Andrew Feldman. But uh, he's playing every hand at this stage. <laughs> basically. <laughs> Six thousand total. Cool. Quick call from Zimbler on the back. Calls a trap. Suited ace. It was a bit messy. What did you call it? The trenches. The trap. Yeah. The trap. Well, there's one of Ward's <laughs> answer in Andrew's hand, but uh, they get he has got Zimbler yeah, dominated. Good calling, so I But you know, Zimbler, as you said, Jesse earlier on, he's a very I mean, aggressive I mean, player, and he's got the. I mean, the button. If you didn't think what I was re and I, I kind of have a feeling that Paul's the kind of guy that if Definitely if he feels he can get his opponent off a hand when he me. misses his a6, he, he might go for some raising and some some calling and outplaying. So wow. it should be interesting. I mean, Andy Ward is the kind yeah. of guy who does homework. I'm, I'm guessing he's he's watched uh, you know Feldman. He's points. watched Zimbler. <clears throat> if you are that kind of guy. Is there, do you have an incentive sometimes to sort of just check the flop and try and, and, and induce bluffs? Just pass, because Zimbler will bet if you check it to him. Yeah, I agree with you, Jesse, but there's one thing. The hand Andrew, uh, Andy Ward's got is two eights. Now, checking gives, well, he's been outflopped here anyway, and I don't think he's going to want to do anything. Yeah, he's done. He, he knows that's not in his, uh, not in his area. Wow. What are we seeing here? What's this? I have no idea. Okay, Tell me. I mean, is wow. Ben Jones take, he's taking a really strong opinion because he's got Ward still in the pot as well. This is great psychology. He knows that the original raise is behind him. He also knows he's just raised under the gun and showed two queens. So people's image of him is going to be pretty strong. And now, how do you like your A6? There's a possible straight on board. There's many two pair hands like Ace-10, Queen-10 and Ace-Queen. This is a really strong play. Now, whether it'll work out of position, I'm not sure. Gee, I know you wouldn't call if I just shoved the lot in. Unless you've got King Jack. Wow, yeah, he's worried about the straight. Wow. That is strong. I mean, don't mess with this guy. He knows exactly what's Ooh, going on. That is great to see. Yeah. He's just turned the tables on him. <laughs> and there's no way he's showing that. I love the psychology in this game. I'm a, I'm a real mathematical, analytical kind of player generally. But this guy showed that psychology and poker, people's skills, knowing your image, knowing your opponent's image is so important. You're a king, you already told me you're a king. I can see some noses yeah. growing in this heat, Jesse. There's a lot of lying going on. There's a few Pinocchios <laughs> at the on. table. I mean, uh, Zimbler's chatting away and Feldman's checks. giving back just as good as he's getting. Cool. It's interesting, Bev Jones lipping in again. He, he is mm. sort of, as you said, trying to really create this seed that he only raises with really strong hands, limps with everything else, and he's using <coughs> that to... Uh, Sorry, didn't mean to hit the glass set the stage for those massive bluffs later yeah, on. Yeah, it's working for him so oh. far. They Cold know that he's not going to be Cold that strong. Uh, that he kind of like Cold raises when he has a good hand and with his marginal hands like small pocket pairs right. and high suit connectors, he, uh, he raises. Cold. But, Cold. you know, Andrew's creating problems for himself. He's out of position Cold. with a marginal hand himself. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> we have seen that Marcus can can really play post-flop. So it'll be interesting to see if Fel Felman doesn't hit and the ball comes something like 9-7 deuce. What's he going to do with ace-10? Check. 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 And that that check there, because Feldman knows if he gets any action, he's he's likely in trouble, or...? You're absolutely right, Jesse. He's checking for check. pot control. 
He doesn't want to get raised by a draw. He's likely to have the best hand and checking twice is an induced bluff. So Feldman's calling here 100% of the time. And what about Beb Jones? Is he just trying to define the hand right now? Still thinking there's ace king could be, could be ace queen. I'm not too sure. Some people call this a value bluff. I mean, you know, he's kind of ish betting for value against hands that have a lot of equity against him, like ace king and stuff. But now he's been called. Be interesting to see what he thinks Filman's got. I knew Filman was calling on the uh, on the turn. Oh, that's okay. an interesting card. If he turns his hand into a bluff here, he'll win the pot. But he has to make a sizable bet into a 42k okay. pot. But he, he gave up. You win. He said you win immediately, which makes me think he didn't have Andrew Feldman on Ace Queen or Ace King, and that Andrew, he, he he did know he was bluffing on the turn. So that makes more sense now. Preparation is the root of all victory. We'll see who's got their game in gear after the break. Jesse's getting the muffin then, he's telling the muffin We keep saying that Felman and Andy Ward, the two Andrews, might be the favourites for this, but if there mm. is going to be a dark horse in this thing, it might well be Paul Zimbler. And he's certainly got the game thinking. for it. <laughs> big, wasn't even a big sign next to the toaster. Do not put muffins in the toaster. <laughs> it's cool. 8 o'clock in the morning, I've only just woken up, I can't read the small print. Yes. Yes. Ah, oh, you want to get your own bag? Raise eight thousand total. Pass. During the world open, uh, nearly set the hotel on fire. Paul Simbler in the breakfast room, morning of the semi-final. It's a big sign next to the toaster saying, "Do not put muffins in the toaster." Zimbler stuck total. two eight in total. <laughs> and, and, and created a small brush fire. At that point. We that's why he might be saying bring on the crumpets. Yeah. He wants to create a fire. I mean, uh... if Pharaoh's raised this from the button, I mean, is, is, Zimbler, is Zimbler considering actually making a pass here that this guy is, in his mind, tight? You know, in his mind, Pharaoh hasn't played that many hands, and the hands that he's played, he has won. And he's got a marginal hand again out of position. He, I think. Folding's not going to be the option. <coughs> he's just deciding whether to re-raise or call, and he's actually re-raised, Jesse. Yeah, he, he didn't really like the idea of having to play this hand post-flop, did he? Couldn't figure out what he wanted to see on the flop. He's out of position. He's going to miss a lot of the time, and it is going to be a difficult hand to play out of position. Also, by re-raising, he now puts Ferrer to the test. Unfortunately for him, as it transpires, he's folding out a worse hand he wants to keep in, so that's one of the downsides of re-raising. Still, still, a nice decision he's made here, anyway. Isn't yeah, it? I mean, I think it's going to work. Again, though, he's not over the moon. He did take his time thinking through his options because if Ferro does have a hand and re raises, Paul has to now commit the 22 can to re raise and put the hand in the dustbin. Wow, is, is Ferro capable of a, of a four bet here? I think this guy's definitely capable of a four bet. There's been a lot of banter between these two guys. Cool. Now you see. And what is that? Is that effectively a float? I knew this is basically, yeah, sure. I have the button, I'm going to take the flop, and I believe I'm going to outplay you after the flop. There's 46 k in the button. Because, I mean, you cannot peel off a flop with ace-deuce. There's nothing you can hit. Yeah. Absolutely. There's nothing you can hit. You're right, Jesse. I'll be interested to see. But they've both missed on this type of board. Now, I think in Zimbler's mind, he's going to be thinking Nick farrow has got a kind of pocket fives, pocket eights, pocket sevens, a hand that he didn't want to play too fast pre-flop, but may have well caught. Now, what Zimbler does in this situation is going to be very interesting. He may well feel obliged to fire out into the 46k okay. pot, being the pre-flop re-raiser, okay. but they've just checked it through. So he's worried that there might be a medium pair here. Oh, what a card! What a card now for Ferro. He's now gone ahead in the hand, and you know Zimbler's drawing to seven percent, as we can see on the uh, on the screen. He's going to be sick if he sees this hand at showdown. Oh no, this is all going wrong. This has all gone completely backwards for Zimbler. I think Zimbler's going to lose it here when he sees this hand at showdown. He's not going to be a happy bunny. He's got outs. 
That's not one of them. Does he fire again? Both these guys are lost, aren't they? I think if he's going to bet 36,000, half the pot, something in that range, you know, we're going to just see a call because his guy's going to be getting three to one. And Zimbla, you know, showing the deuce, raising lots of hands. He's not going to have much credibility here. I mean, the story doesn't make sense. Would he have full, well, checked a big pair on the flop? I mean, Jack's full, maybe, but what else would he have checked on the flop with? He could have checked Jack's full. I mean, there is an opportunity. It's Jack 4-4. Four, four. There is a possibility that he might have well checked a hand like two kings. But at the same time, he did take a lot of time. He seemed a bit indecisive before the flop. Trying to sell that story is going to be difficult. Now, Zimbler's bet very, very small. He's bet 22,000 into the 78k pot. You know, Ferrer here is getting 5-1 to one on this 20... Uh, 41 on this call. I mean, it's... You know, if he's come this far, pre-flop, what did he want to see? On the turn, what did he want to see? He went ahead in the hand. He, I would at, be at amazed. At this stage, it's, it's nearly impossible for him to fold this hand, isn't it? You know, I wouldn't have played a hand this way. I don't way, believe you, Paul. But as played, and he's going, I don't believe you, I think he's going to get looked up here. I mean, I wouldn't have played a hand this way, but as played, I think I would reluctantly call on the river. Good call. Yeah, he's called. Call. And Zimbler's going to be call. sick here. Yeah. Good call. You got ace queen? No. You've got a pair of them. Yeah, yeah, it's good. When he sees the ace-deuce, I mean, he, he thinks it's going to be a hand like sixes, Eight, sevens. When he sees the ace-deuce, he's, he's going to be oh, sick. Okay. Wow. Sick. That is so sick. Wow. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. How, how long will it take for Zimbler to forget about that big hand? Huh? If he gets his chips back and doubles up pretty quickly at this level, I think he can put it behind him. But this is definitely the pressure time here for Zimbler. And, uh, you know, it's definitely in his mind. He's talking about the hand. That's the big hand so far. It got to show down. It was a, it was a big, big pot. And, uh, so it has been the biggest part of the, the night so far. You're right. Pharaoh. Nice too. He hasn't really come in first, I don't think, any past, right? Love the respect yes. I get. But he is probably one of the least experienced players on the table, and I said, you know, before, that nice. can oh, create nice. a problem well, just got to commit myself to these well. guys. He's unpredictable. A professional player wouldn't call a re raise here with Ace wow. but this guy's prepared to I'm do that and you. make life difficult for them. So, oh, taxi! Talk about making life difficult. I mean, mm -hmm. Zimbler's only got 50,000. He's stuck in 22. It's, it's a five-time-plus raise, and it's half his, just under half his stack. He's odd. He's effectively moving all in here. He's effectively saying to them, I'm putting half my stack in. If you move all in, I'm not folding for the rest. And he doesn't want to make a raise where... You, okay. Like, in a typical example, if he made his standard small raise to nine... Oh, wow. There's some gambling going on, and he's calling. I decided I was going to raise that much to gamble. Yeah, and he's not folding, so. He's got the best hand. I mean, he Should he will be amazed. I wonder if Ben dark. Jones did 10, not 20, count this 30, down exactly. He, he did it very quickly. Come Either he just thinks the Queen King is way ahead of Zimbler's range, or he thought he had fold equity. He definitely didn't have any fold equity. I mean, there's no way Bring on the trumpets. I mean, he's bring on the trumpets. This is the chance for him to win 110k pot back in the game. Game, I think Bev Jones yeah. has possibly made a slight error, not exactly calculating the stack sizes. He didn't have any fold equity, but he maybe just thought Thanks. he out and out had the best hand. Oh, Zimbler was on tilt, Kitty. and that's why he Go. stuck the money in. At the end of the day, it is Zimbler yeah. all in eight, eight, ahead, eight. Don't have to swear. but uh, eight, needing eight, the hole. It's, eight, it's eight, over half of Bev Jones' stack as well. Way over. You got club oh. there. It's yep. never easy. It's now a flip. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a virtual <laughs> flip, right? It's a virtual flip. Why we see the percentages. He's slight favourite, actually, with the king queen, with the He's queen of come. clubs. So you're my favourite. You're a favourite. Favourite? Yeah. You're so far in front, I'll swap hands. <laughs> wow. Uh -oh. now, now he's massive. Uh, now, it's two two now there's just two, two aces. Three two aces in the deck. Yeah, two aces. That can't be a club. Two outs. Five percent. Ace of clubs are no good, is it? Paul's done. Yeah. Ace of spades. Oh, yeah, I can't get the eight. What am I talking about? We've seen Stranger Things happen, Jesse. Oh, Ace. baby, and he's done no. it. Jesse, you the trumpet. commentate his curse on that. <laughs> he's hit the two <laughs> outs. I'm telling you, I'm not messing with you. And Marcus now. looks <laughs> sick. He had a virtual <laughs> lock on the hand. You see, I didn't even stand up. You know, that was a stand up trick. That's poker right oh, there. That That's why we love this game. Oh, that hurts. Just I, I thought it was a goodbye for Andy, I was going to cry. 
Poor Beb Jones, uh, 15,000 now. He's taking it pretty well, Marcus, but he must be gutted. I mean, this is a big buy-in tournament. Ace from space, wow. baby. Ace from space. You know what? He did get his money in behind, so when the cards ran out, he did, Thank you know... Not get what he deserved, but you know he can't be too upset that he didn't win that hand because he does, when he the does. money he knows, he, he likes me to sweat for it, but he knows he knows up front what's going to happen. Hundred and ten thousand. I mean, uh, he's not that far from the chip lead. Paul knew what he was doing. He put half a stack into call the other half. That's why made it so much. You got a big ace. You got a pair. Let's get it. He felt like gambling, gambling. He did. At my table today, I've got two friends, Nick Farrow, Andrew Feldman. Um, I know Andy Ward from my semi-final in the last tournament we played, and two guys that I met in the bar last night, but I extracted as much information from them as I possibly could, so I know how to push their buttons later. And uh, no, I'm, I know I'm gonna win. It's, I don't know how to explain it, but I know. Zero to hero. Oh, I've got enough chips to make another triple barrel bluff. And me. <laughs> oh, that, that's my, 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 my. How much have you got? 50. 15. Make oh. it 14, I can re raise. Can I ask a question before I do anything? If I make it 8 and he goes all in for 15, it, 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 is the raise 4, 8, 12, or is it 4, 8, 16? If you make it 8, 8. Is the next raise. And then he 12? goes no, all for, in. Forget, no. if, if Andrew wants, can he make it 12 or does he have to make no, it 16? No, 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 no
Yeah. Zimbler has level. gotten Bev Jones twice uh, on the river, oh, and guys. twice on the river is too many times <laughs> for Marcus to stay river. in. <laughs> I think we haven't seen the full extent of Marcus's game. I mean, that play with the 3-4 he made earlier, pretty impressive. Huh? Very impressive. But, uh, you know, today... Can't knock a good man down. It was his nice. day. He's been rivered twice by the same yeah, guy, and now that. that just gives this to yeah, Mark Bay lucky anyway, even more chips. European Open 5 kicks on in the time warp here after the break. Andy Ward's going to be mindful of the fact the that both well. Zimbler and Feldman with chips have come. position on him, so that's why I think we're seeing Andy Ward playing a bit of button-down poker at the moment. Uh, yeah, down to 108,000 there, Andy Ward. Uh, huh? I mean, it's, it's plenty of chips, but you consider he was at about 130 and has lost yeah. the last uh, 25 or so through attrition. That's a good point. Has not moved the chip. He's a very patient man, and I'm sure he's got a game plan for this format, so... I'm sure would be happy just to have above starting stack. Nice to 9,000. Do you get any kind of physical tells off Zimbler? I mean, he's he's all over the place. Sometimes he talks, sometimes he's quiet. Um, now, this is an interesting spot. Andrew Feldman knows again that his hand is ahead of the range of Paul Zimbler's button raising. Now, the problem that he's got is any re-raise at these blinds is going to start committing a lot of chips. And it's an awkward stack size for the for the re-raise all-in. Is it too many chips for the re-raise all-in? I feel like Ward would do it. Oh. Re-raise the 30 Well, he's doing it anyway. Here's the thing. If Andrew Feldman's got less, it's easy. He just ships it in. Okay, sirrah, sirrah. If he's got more, he can re-raise and fold or play a flop or whatever. But with these stack sizes, this is what this game is all about. This is where Andy Ward excels. Knowing what to do with certain hands at certain blind levels is key. Now Andrew's raised it to 30. He's put a lot of chips in. He's not comfortable. He's not comfortable at all. Zimbler is stubborn. Zimbler doesn't oh. want to make Andrew Feldman's life easy, and he's called now fives out of position to a guy that covers you. Oh, Feldman Good hates tribute. this. He oh. hates this. He, he, this is disgusting for Feldman. He's praying. He's got presto to two fives. He's praying for a five. Really? And you know what? Zimbler is in the best possible shape he could be in. He's not up against an ace ten and dominated or an overpay. Now that's not a bad fl uh, flop for two, the two fives. I kind of like the way Zimbler has played this. I mean, Feldman put a third of his stack in saying to himself, yeah. well, I, I'll either win the pot or he'll ship on me and I can fold. But but Zimbler's given him a really tough spot because now Feldman has to try and put, what, another th another half his stack in now? I love Paul Zimbler. Now, Paul Zimbler, in order to turn this 9-10 into a profitable play, has to have a hand on certain board textures after the flop. And he's starting off with a plan. He's just betting just under half the pot, 30,000 into 64,000. He's saying, Andrew Feldman's checked. Now, when Andrew Feldman's saying he's checked, he, he either means he's checking to give up, or he has a marginal hand, or he has like an ace kind of king and he's kind of missed. So, out of position, this is a guessing game for Feldman. It's basically all in on fold. He knows he has to make his decision, Jesse, swing. right now. It's funny, too, because this is what Feldman's about. He's 21 years old. He's won seven figures playing cash poker. He gives himself tricky decisions okay, because he's good at making tricky decisions. You're absolutely right. The greatest players in the world, the Ivies, the Antonises, the Durs, these kind of players put themselves in these really awkward situations, and it's very profitable when you get it right. You've got a queen. Oh. His subconscious mind is processing all the information, the bet oh. size, how Paul looks, the way the pot played out. It's a big moment for Andrew Feldman. Can, can he work this out? 
And Felman's going to go back Ten. to the fact that he's still going to have chips left over if he makes this lay down. One time, show me a queen. <laughs> Please show me Five, a queen. Four. Five, four. You really want to see? Yeah. Uh, really? Yeah. Zimbler got him. Zimbler got him and Felman shaking his richer. head. It's really interesting what you said oh, was, I he made himself made a tricky a decision there, Feldman, because if he made the right one, yeah. he was going to basically make a lot of money and double up. But he made it tricky for himself, and then he's made the wrong decision. I wish you never showed me that. Time for some hand analysis. Was that painful? I mean, Neil, you always talk about a man with a plan. Where was the plan? Well, Zimbler had a good plan. I mean, it's folded around to him on the button. He, he's uh, raising a lot of hands, and he makes his raise. Andrew Feldman had sort of a plan. His plan was, I'm going to re-raise this Paul Zimbler. He's never got a hand, and I'm just going to cross my fingers and pray that he folds. But uh, the problem was he's got a few too many chips. He can't re-raise all in, so now he's re-raising a sort of messy amount. He ends up putting in 30,000. It's roughly a third of his chips. He's made a slightly oversized re-raise, I think because he's terrified of being called. And now he's ended up in a situation where he's going to play a pair of fives out of position. Most times he's not going to flop a five. There's not really a flop he's going to like. And Paul Zimbler's probably going to steal it from him. Yeah, and the great thing about No Limit Hold'em and the great thing about Paul Zimbler, you throw up a softball, he's going to hit it out of the park. Yeah, Andrew Feldman, when this, when this flop comes down, it's not actually a bad flop for two fives. He's really got to just seize the day and make a continuation bet. And I'm afraid he bottles it and Paul Zimbler shows the heart to steal the pot from him. Chips are so precious. Don't leave your ducks hanging on the pond. I must have a massive dog. You're not a massive dog. Lines up. Three and six thousand. Bring on the trumpet. That's what we needed. Bring on the trumpet. Looks like a raising hand. Absolutely, you raised exactly the same hand previously from a pretty similar position. Raise eighteen thousand total. Not surprised to see that move there. Pass. Hmm. hmm. Now this is... Zimbler has been promising. He's been promising Pharaoh he's going to get him. What is he going to do? What has he got in you store? But he is out of position. You're only here to win on me. Just, I mean... To me, Nick, tournament strategy-wise, this feels like a fold. Ego-wise, Zimbler wants to play the hand. Or is there a logical tournament strategy reason for playing this hand? Pharaoh is opening up, but he's still, you know, has the respect. Now, now he's made that move. That, that, that's a big move. Wow. And he's, he's actually pushed with the best hand. He's going to get this through. Unless Felman wakes up with a big hand, a he is going to get it through. Cool. So, is there a, a is there a table dynamic here that Zimbler is trying to reassert his dominance? You're absolutely right. There's a massive dynamic going on here. I mean, he might be folding out some better hands like Ace Eight, Ace Nine, Ace Ten, and, and some baby pairs or whatever. He is in fact winning, but I think you've hit the nail on the head, Jesse. For him to make this move against this guy at this point in front of the rest of the table. He is really asserting himself as the chip daddy, and I think this is a, you know, a beautifully timed move. If you show as me it yours, happens, I'll show you mine. Yeah, it's very works. gutsy. <laughs> it's rec It is a bit reckless too, but maybe, but maybe that's Paul Zimbler's style. Yeah. I think he got a pocket pair like eights or nines. Now that's what he's thinking. If he's got a pocket pair like eights or nines, can I stick the ninety one k in and gamble? But I think Nick, at this stage. I think you just got to I don't know, if you call, you'll see him. If you don't call, you still see him. <laughs> Does he feel like he has to gamble to win this match? Is he in, is he thinking like that already? I mean, is he? can he play himself off a 91,000 stack? He's still in the game with a 91,000 stack, but there is the big jump coming up to five and 10,000 in a few hands. I fold. Wow. Pass. 
legs folded. He said, he said, what the hell? Yeah, <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> sure one. That's what people usually say away. before they stick <laughs> their tomorrow. body in. Yeah, well, I'll probably forget by then. We'll see it on the video tell you. It'll it's be interesting, though. The, the, the chip that, that is getting yeah, stronger everything. and stronger. Jesse's just you know, tipped over 200,000. He now has exactly just over a third of the chips in play. He's going to be the man to stop based on what I'm seeing. Well, Feldman's under the gun here with just about 11 big blinds and Nick he seemed to be capable of not chipping of making a raise that's like 25 26,000 um I don't know like here exactly what do you think? you're shipping right you know I mean I don't want to put a quarter of my stack in 24,000 and then fold to the re-raise um, because the price that I'm getting to call the remainder of my chips off, I mean, look at this type of situation here. <sighs> I've seen stranger things happen. Sometimes this guy would call on the button and then, you know, he doesn't want to re-raise, he doesn't want to fold, so he ends up calling and then Andrew's in that really sticky spot again. I think it's a pre-flop game now at 510. I think it's a pre-flop game now with these stack sizes and these are the type of hands out of position that Andrew's going to go and have to number crunch and study on. But so, let's see. I mean, because Feldman has sort of, he may have made a tactical mistake here. What is the best way for Pharaoh to exploit what may have been a mistake? Is it to go all in? Is it to call? Now, I don't know. What is going through Feldman's mind? If Nick Farrow ships in here, because he has Feldman covered. Does Feldman call off out of his 116k stack? See, the call is the problem that I said might come up in this situation. Because Pharaoh's in position, and basically... Feldman he... has to hit. Yeah. What have you got there? About 100? Nick. I won't get a chip count, as I know. Almighty. Well, this is good for Feldman, because he gets a chip count, too, yeah, with, uh, when, uh, uh, you know, Roughly about Zimbler's asking. Do you want, do you want to make that count? No, no. He's thinking about a squeeze play. What are the arguments for and against, regardless of what Tim Zimbler has? Yep. I mean... The mm -hmm. arguments for and against are that Feldman raises too many hands quite like with his stack size, so it doesn't necessarily have to have anything, and the fact that Ferro's just called is kind of pointing in the direction that he isn't slow oh, playing aces feeling. or kings yeah. and a monster. So he might oh, just think feeling. that, you know, there's a, a pocket pair that Ferro can't fold or, or a kind of hand that he has, like a king-queen, king-jack suited okay, type of hand, yes. and if he makes the big squeeze, he'll get it through. Now, this is really interesting. This is what I said the drawbacks are for, for making this type of play out of position. I'm dying to see this flop, Jesse. If it doesn't come ace high, and it hasn't, well... Well, it, well, it's all over again for Feldman. A gut shot, two over cards, and a flush draw. He's got the best hand, quote-unquote. And look at that. Look, he's all, and he's done absolutely nothing wrong making a big push. Now, Feldman's got backdoor hearts, a gut shot, a, and an ace. So it's virtually a flip on this flop. And yet he's probably going to lay down the best hand. This is... This is, what is this, the fourth or fifth time he's this faced? This is the fourth or fifth time, Jesse, you're right, that Andrew Feldman's made these raises with these type of stack sizes. He was even doing it two, four, and three, six, and found himself in these kind of spots. He's going to have to look at this tape when he gets home, you know, when the show's out on TV, and he's going to have to start analysing what he's doing here. Because raising 24,000 out of 110k stack and just folding flops is just not going to be profitable for him in the long run. I wouldn't have even minded a ship here. He's got an overcard to the board, he's got a gut shot eight, and he's got the backdoor nut flush draw. Yeah, and the fact that he isn't a flip, I mean, yeah. I know he doesn't love, but he's actually, by folding, he's giving up equity because he's basically, he's he's nearly getting two to one on the pot here. <clears throat> he has made so many tough decisions on himself. <laughs> you felt it. Uh, he, might, he might be wearing a hair shirt. I'm not sure. Uh, I thought yeah, you see, he just can't really bring himself to call. I wouldn't have minded seeing a bet to commit himself on that kind of flop. He knows he can draw to an 8 to win. He probably an ace is good most of the time. And if he hits running hearts, that might be good. Anyone doubles to the chip leader right now, they're the chip leader. Uh, I mean, Smythe is a, maybe a few chips out of that. But um, you got to be careful about when the chips go in here. And yet, more than you have All to right. be reckless in a measured manner. Um, this is the first time Feldman's done one of this. 
is is this kind of a neat little play because he's going to get respect, or is, is well, he's not raised folding now, and he folds out a better pass. hand with seven nine like queen ten, and cool. okay, and, and he's cool. got an eight. Oh, You're he's got kings. Yes. Wow, it's the first time <laughs> Feldman has gotten even sort of remotely out of line like this, and uh, he's got it snapped back nice. up. It, nice hand. It's, uh, Listen, is it, it's a reverse is reward. Andrew's very unlucky. It's the first time he's actually made this kind of all-in ship that I said he should have been making before, and he's walked into Kings. Uh, you know, he was low in chips. He only oh, had up just under 100,000. The blinds are 715. Can't he got the queen 10 to fold. Basically. You know, he got the 8-5 to fold, and he's walked into the nuts, basically. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting to... It would be interesting to wonder exactly what Ward's range are. I mean, obviously, he's calling with Kings. Would he have called with Ace-5, Ace-6? I think so. I think Andy <coughs> understands the maths of these types of situations. Left. And he's drawing dead. Officially drawing dead. UK yeah. Open yeah. champion Check, uh, down the spout. Yeah, out in fifth, but I mean, he's made it a good long time. And Feldman. Yeah. Oh, then I've got chips. Tell you what, he was a big factor in this heat for a long old time. No, I've got, I've got good game, Mr. Feldman. Unlucky. Yeah. yeah, we'll be seeing plenty more of Andrew. He's going to grow up on TV poker, believe me. Good luck, That has made Andy Ward uh, the new demon in town. And three kings taking out Feldman. Ward on 213. Him and Zibler on top. Uh, well, pretty much. It's everybody but Smythe. Is that it? Absolutely. Nick Farrow's still in there with a great shout. Peter Smythe needs to double up here. Really but, you know, if he does, he's back in this. It's okay. Only at the moment. Anyway. Yeah, Smythe's still in by the grace of a couple of well-timed folds, perhaps. Grace. Good 5,000 title. This but is going all in. This is a pair. He not. Wow. Pass. I'm very surprised he hasn't adjusted to Andy Ward. His instincts were spot on earlier. Sm Peter Smythe's going to get his chips in here. He's going to see Andy Ward with King 8. Now, when he goes all in, Andy Ward will fold and he'll pick up a lot of chips. I, I don't know what's happened, but it looks like Zimbler has lost his bottle. This guy's got bottle in abundance. It, I'm right, you know, you're right. It does surprise me that he... Uh, it's twice in a row now. Yeah, it's twice He's in a row. He's lost his bottle. He's really got a t maybe a bit too much respect for Andy Ward. He was reading the game really well against Nick Farrow. He was reading the game really well against Andrew Feldman. But he, just against Andy Ward, he, he, he's really, look, he's going to be. Well, and, and now he's going to see it. Zimbler, yeah, Zimbler should have a bit of a read now on Ward. The, the, the situation, though, of course, it's Smythe all in. When the cards went on their back, I was watching Paul Zimbler. He got up and looked at what Andy Ward's hand was. He didn't care about what the small stack had because he knew it would probably be a decent hand. He just wanted to know what Andy Ward was raising with. And he, he was a bit of a slump in his body language. And that's not a bad flop for Andy Ward. <laughs> Place. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, it could come yeah. ace ace, but Smythe doesn't feel it, let's be frank. He's halfway out the door. Unlucky. Well played. <sighs> he got short early, lost a couple of key hands, key races, and uh, gave himself every chance to stay in it. I'm sure will come back from the green room. Well, Ward's starting to hit him. I'm not frustrated or disappointed at all. I mean, I think the best you can hope for is that you've played reasonably well. I consciously played tightly because those guys on my right were aggressive. I'm reasonably happy with the way I played and it just didn't happen today. As I said, if I win the last time, who knows, but it's good fun. Welcome back to the action here. It has been fast and furious. As Zindler tries to win this one from six out. I know. Take a bit longer. There's all of a sudden not that much <clears> in it, although <throat> Pharaoh now decidedly in a back a seat. Half of uh, Zimbler's stack. Zimbler might just play a little tight right here. This is a marginal spot on the button with a decent ish hand. He's got a guy that's short that's going to be, you know, getting in pretty light with uh, just behind him, and he's got the chip leader in the big blind. Right, so it's, yeah, he sees all in. all in. And now he gets a massive price to call, and he's actually 50 50. Yeah. Got nightmares with this play in. Nightmares with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's uh, it's the hand that he got. Uh, more, right? 
He's already doubled Pharaoh up once holding wow. King 8. Oh, why did I do that? It was marginal. I mean, King 8's kind of strong, but you said there, there were a lot of strategic arguments more. for a fold there, right? 32 and 32 is 64, and 15 is 64, 74, 79. 79. Because How much Nick Farrow had just over 10 more. big lines. Oh, oh sorry, he's, he only had 190. I mean. 75. 87. 87, yeah. Got Ice King? Got a pair? Who cares? Go for it. I'll get him off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> I think he was pretty sincere. He was pretty sincere there. Okay, and our survey I'll says go good it. decision. If we hit. If not, Thomas Bill is going to get an email from me tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Yeah, both Bring these guys the need. I mean, obviously, it's it's everything for Pharaoh, but it's big Bring for planes. Zimbler as well. That would do me. Oh, wow. It's all over. Nearly drawn yeah, dead on the flop. killed me twice. Yeah. How much? And I think. Uh, is he drawing dead? No, he's two percent. Oh, marvelous! Marvelous! Yeah, marvelous! Down. It had to be five. It had to be a straight. Oh five yeah, and that's six, right, that Jesse. Yeah. Beautiful. We like to be drawn dead on the flop. Five six gonna come. <laughs> oh, wow. Happy days. <laughs> <laughs> happy days. Nice. <laughs> that is the biggest <laughs> rub ever. Yeah, that was. That was. That's Let's like, make running kings. I had a feeling I was coming like open wound. You needed to hit your seven, Nick. That's a big pop for you. You're now basically the new chip leader. <laughs> End of the day, sevens versus the king eight, a straight race, Nick. The board came kind of funny. The ball came very funny. He was drawing to running five six and ended up making three kings by the river. And uh, for Zimbler now, how soon is he going to get his chips in? I think we are about to see. The odds kind of say that what's going to happen is Zimbler's going to push and, and one of the other two is going to call. Um, <coughs> Eventually, what, you know, he faded the king ten when he pushed the nine deuce, but. Well, eventually, hands have to run into hands. Cool. Yeah, he's got cool. sevens. Or a seven. I expect you're good. Right. Yeah, he's got a seven. Okay, so they chop Oh, up baby, doll. That was a split. quick call oh, by Zimbler. He knew what he was split. looking for, and he was right I there. Think. He was right. He knows Andy's getting low. He knows that Andy will be pushing a wide range, and a seven's just too good to pass up. And, Bring on know, the trumpet. There's a 28% split here. Come on, get in the game. He's just got to see some picture cards to get the chop. Oh, that's a terrible feel. Terrible flop. Club it is, but the clubs yeah. are there. Yeah, you know it's come but he's, he's behind now, isn't he? Yeah, Ward's hit the five. It's a flip. They only split 1% of the time. I almost feel these two guys would have been happy with the chop. Oh, okay. That's Ill. a hard card on the turn. Takes away the sevens anyway. It's still live to the clubs. He needs a club. And he misses. But he's played a great game. Guys, <laughs> he's been he's been amazing, yeah, he hasn't he? <laughs> doesn't do anything Inspirational for perhaps. Uh, <laughs> Good luck. Never stop trying. Oh, he, played played no, he never stopped trying. For me, I feel it's a bit of Could an injustice for him to go out third. Sick as a dog. Um, to be knocked out of this, I, I believed I was the best player in the heat. I should have won the heat. I had the chips and the cards. There's nothing you can do. It's the cards. I'm very much in this format that, you know, in order to win, you need to take control when you're chip leader and put the short stacks under pressure. A lot of people don't want to double up the short stacks, but I know they don't want to commit their chips with a bad hand, especially the players that were on the table today. Such the best player on that table. It's ridiculous. Two players left. Who will see again? But only one, of course, the guaranteed spot in the semi. Nick Farrow has had his moments to shine, but now he's a little outstacked and could decide to open that game up. He's up against a toughie here, Andy Ward, technically proficient. Pretty flawless tonight, Nick. Absolutely. Should be a good heads up. Uh, what do the stats tell us uh, as far as what we're about to expect? With the bet frequencies very similar, it's really the chips and the blinds now. Andy's got a slight chip lead, but it's very close. Any early pots could swing the chip lead to, the, to Nick Farrow. So aggression will be the key here. The blinds 10, 20,000. And the one that takes the initiative, I think, will come out the victor. My feeling is, uh, if you're thinking about seeing flops, uh, Ward, with these big blinds, is probably kind of flop-averse. Uh, it's, not, it's not something he tends towards. 
No. I mean, we're going to see a raise here. But generally when we will see flops is when he limps in with a weak hand. Not like King-Queen, but a really weak hand. And Andy just sees 8-3 off suit and checks. That's the only time we'll see flops. But otherwise, you know, a lot of the time it's going to be raise and take it. Uh, I mean, if there's an angle for Pharaoh up... I'm all in. Yeah. Raised and all I in. think he's going to call. Cool. Yeah. Cool. If there was an angle for Pharaoh here, I was wondering if it was going to try and be to sort of trap with a limp, uh, expecting Andy to push lightly. But uh, King Queen pretty strong, and he feels like Ward's range of re-raising there is is is, is wide. Yeah, and uh, you know, wide enough that he's going to go with the hand. And you know what? There's 470,000 chips in this pot. This really is the key pot. Ward favorite, still a favorite. The king and the queen, of course, key cards. If they don't come, it's Andy Ward in the semis. He's got a strong record in this format, and Pharaoh needs to draw. And that hurts. That really hurts. That takes two of the outs away. He can't hit the king or queen of hearts now. Four outs left for Nick Pharaoh. And it's all over. Eight's full. Nice. One hand was all it took. It plays itself. Nice they said it played itself, and it really did. It was easier making my moves as, as time went on, and as I started to get the chips, um, I felt I felt as though I could do it. Um, I feel quite unfortunate, really. It was you know 60 to 40 shot uh, with Andy heads up. I had to hang in there for quite a while. That's the bit I was pleased with, really. That that when I found the kings, I still had a hundred. From then on in, the hands all played themselves, and, and I was probably, you know, I was fortunate to win the hands, but I think what I was happy with, that I still had 100 at that point. If I dropped down to 60, it would have been very difficult from there. The competition gets even more intense when the shooting stars come into play. The highest stakes cash player in the world, Richard Ashby, takes on last year's runner-up when the European Open 5 continues.